The Board of Control made its decision to suspend me after agents of the President of the Synod were unsuccessful in efforts to arrange a deal which would have made suspension unnecessary. Persistent efforts to arrange a deal have been going on for the past two months. The terms proposed to me were as follows. If I would agree to accept a call, arrangements for which were being made through friendly district presidents, a call being another position as pastor of a congregation in the synod, none of the faculty members over 65 years of age would have to be retired. Professor Paul Getting, who was not re-engaged at the November meeting of the board, would be re-engaged. A one-year moratorium would be declared on all efforts to remove faculty members, and the charges preferred against me would not be pursued. I was informed that unless I agreed to the proposal, my suspension was inevitable, the decision not to renew Professor Getting's contract would stand, the board would proceed to implement its new retirement policy, and additional procedures would be invoked against the faculty. In response, I made it clear again and again that I would not be a party to such a deal and could not even consider another call as a pastor as long as the present charges against me remain in force. You are, in effect, uh, saying that you yourself will not take part in any uh, reaction to your being suspended, but by making your charge of, uh, of a deal uh, attempted and by presenting evidence, you are thus making it possible for those people who follow you to take up the case, are you not? Yes, what I am doing is telling the story to the church and allowing the people of the church to make up their own minds. I suspect that uh, this action will have a considerable impact on the life of our church. You expect that this seminary will be closed down? I really can't say whether the seminary will be closed down or not. Would you su support such uh, action? No, I won't support an action. I think that uh, each group that is involved, the students and the faculty, will have to make up its own mind as to what it wants to do at this particular time. I expect some response will be forthcoming in the next 24 hours. Maybe it's just as well that we wait. I am afraid that uh, the first impulse is to uh, answer that kind of letter in kind. We don't want to do that. We what, want what do you mean in kind? Are you uh, making some kind well, of uh, appraisal of the, of the timber of that letter? The tone of the letter was not only very brisk, but I, uh, I think, if I may speak for myself, unfair. And uh, we don't want to do that. We want to respond as uh, the sorts of people the church expects us to be, as Christian gentlemen, and that's going to take some consideration. Uh, give us another day, day and a half. What makes the letter uh, unfair in your own opinion? Certain charges are made, for one thing, um, for which there's no evidence. Uh, there either are misunderstandings or just uh, patent untruths, and uh, those will have to be dealt with kindly. He set a time and said we had to be here at that time. Um, he made it a demand and didn't uh, consult with us at all. And many of us have taken that to mean that he has not um, recognized the fact that we have in fact declared a moratorium. Now, how long could this moratorium go on? How long are you prepared to keep it up? Only God knows that. Are you prepared to keep it up for a pretty long time, though? I think in lieu of what happened last night at the Elam meeting in the field house and what happened this morning, I think the students are, are willing to stand up for the gospel for as long as that takes. How about the faculty? Do you think they will remain out as long as the students do? I can't speak authoritatively from the faculty, uh, but I think that the faculty has taken as much as it can take of injustice. and. Uh, as my brothers, I hope that they stay out. Does the faculty majority ask for the resignation of Dr. Charlemagne? Yes. We, asked, we acted on that yesterday, and uh, we had invited Dr. Charlemagne to meet with us so that we could discuss this with him, to present it to him and to uh, invite his response. He was not in a position to meet with us yesterday, and so uh, 
the statement of the faculty was hand delivered to him. We're still looking forward to an opportunity to uh, hear his response. You've had no responses yet? Not yet. If we go back to work on Monday and you are in place, we have a regular faculty meeting next Tuesday, January 29th. And I will be glad to respond to your document at that point. Now, I haven't examined this document too closely. I did notice that some of the accusations are terribly distorted, and I can kind of expect that in the present situation. Uh, now, maybe they know something I don't know, uh, but they make statements in there uh, of things that I don't even uh, recall. I've heard the word slanderous used. Uh, people are very concerned about um, just widening the split in the church, which is already beginning, by the kind of tone that President Price has adopted in this document. How many people did he send it to? Almost all of the Lutheran synods? No, uh, to all the clergymen, all the teachers, to, uh, as I recall, lay members of boards, to all the people who were delegates at the convention of our church body in New Orleans last July, to many, many thousands of people. I haven't, uh, I couldn't comment on that because the Board of Control actually never talked about it. In fact, refused to discuss it because uh, they were assuming that they were dealing with people who were responsibly interested in carrying out the obligations of their call. Apparently they're uh, quite angry with these, uh, with these faculty members. Very much so. Uh, very disturbed uh, and find it very difficult to believe uh, that adult persons in a Christian calling would work like this. Now, they, could, they might understand this at a secular college, but for people at an institution of this kind intending to teach people to follow a Christ-like example of sacrifice and uh, Injustice, suffering injustice if necessary, they, they find this very difficult. They, they find it to be more of the spirit of the Enlightenment rather than of the biblical revelation. Any effect at all on the other Concordia Seminary in Springfield uh, has it been felt over there? No, not at all. In fact, I've heard from them. They're continuing as normal. I understand that uh, at least one student from here wanted to transfer there, but they declined to accept his transfer. Mm -hmm telling him that his responsibilities were down here. Would it be rather hard to, uh, to understand how 40 professors, 40 out of 48, could be teaching uh, improper and false doctrine? I'm convinced that the figure is not 40. They have banded together. Uh, I have uh, reason to believe, I've heard it from numerous men, that they have compacted together. Uh, because if, if Dr. Tejan goes, then we all go because we believe like he, he defended us, why shouldn't we stand uh, and defend him now? So you don't believe the whole 40 are solidly involved in this and uh, behind? Uh, I, I cannot, I cannot in my own heart believe that. No, I don't. Doctor, briefly, what specifics did the uh, committee find? What specifics well, of false teaching? What three, did they three, decide? Three in general are cited in the introductory remarks mm -hmm. to the resolution. Uh, if this sounds a little bit technical, forgive me, because theology is somewhat technical. First item has to do with uh, what we call gospel reductionism, which is described as uh, taking seriously uh, mostly just the gospel part of what we call the scriptures and uh, somewhat reducing the significance of other elements uh, of information, let us say. That's, that's one item. I think one of the more significant ones is the, is the uh, charge uh, that uh, once a, a person becomes a Christian, he is no longer under God's law as a guidance to his moral life. He is motivated by love, where the Lutheran Church has always insisted, but the application of love is determined by God's law. And the third item has to do with the nature of the authority of Scripture. What's been any specifics that uh, the committee well, objected uh, to? Yes, uh, I suppose if you don't uh, press me too hard on it, that has to do mostly with 
an understanding of, uh, let's say, the historicity and facticity of certain accounts, like the creation of Adam and Eve. There are some members who did not teach it literally. Was that what the objection was? Well, in, in, the, uh, okay. in the booklet, for instance, that the faculty majority published, an option was given between taking this as an historical event or symbolic. Or symbolic. The program of instruction, which I am asking you to resume in the name of the board, is the one that was agreed on when you registered. The only way this objective can be met is for all of us to go back to work. If this should not happen, and I've underlined these words in my text, if this should not happen, then the burden for disruption will lie squarely on the shoulders of those who do not return to the classroom and make it impossible, therefore, to resume our normal schedule. They are going out to speak to the larger issue of how, uh, how we as a community feel that we must address the actions of the Board of Control, primarily that we want the charges once and for all answered about these men here, these men that we study under. If they are guilty of false doctrine, we want to know what the charges are and we want to have those charges documented and proved. If they are innocent, we want them exonerated and we will be happy to get back in class. The 259 students who left Concordia's campus last week to spread the word around the country on what they are being taught here came back today, not to class, but they came back to plan the next step. They say they had logged over 118,000 miles collectively, and for the most part, they say they were successful. Well, I went out to California, and I think I was very successful. And I had an opportunity to talk to many, many laymen, pastors, elders, and was received quite warmly, openly, and they really wanted to find out what I had to say. I didn't go anywhere. I stayed here and tried to coordinate the effort. Uh, we had 259 fellows around the country, and they covered 118,350 miles. To tell the, the members of our church body what we have been taught and that our, our uh, professors have not been given a fair hearing. Well, I went to Richmond, Virginia, and I felt that we were very successful there. A lot of ministers came up to me later and said that they couldn't sleep the first night after our first presentation because they didn't realize the situation was that bad. And quite a few laymen came up and said that they were better informed now and they were appreciative of what we had done and they were concerned about our church. I went to Milwaukee. I vicared here last year and I didn't think we'd get too good of a reception, but I'm really surprised. Uh, I think the reactions was mixed, but I think the support for the students, the faculty here, is really picking up. The conservative element among the students on campus is a recognized minority, but today that minority became vocal, as Fred Storterbaum told us that he feels that the conservative students are to be heard. So that we have been. Uh uh, misrepresented and our position because we have been silent and because we are fragmented uh, our position is not known uh, to enough people. Do you talk regularly with other conservative students here Fred? Yes, yes. And nobody has said to you that they have felt they've been harassed before, they have been intimidated uh, and they are fearful uh, to come out with any kind of statement? Uh, no, I don't know anyone who fears putting their name on anything uh, except some conservatives who have been told, uh, I understand, that's what they told me anyway, this is third hand now, that they were not to sign anything. They have been told this by the so-called faculty minority. This is advice. 
I guess you could call it advice, yes. For a coming day? Probably. Judgment day? Probably. It can never be said that this movement among students and faculty here on the campus of Concordia Seminary is fading or dying. If anything, it is picking up steam and getting ready to move into the next phase. Julius Hunter, Channel 5 Eyewitness News on the campus of Concordia Seminary. Chip, what was your uh, reception uh, as you traveled around the country? It was basically very, very good. In uh, two congregations, we did receive some opposition. Mostly it was uh, concerned that very little information had been received, and they were in the dark. There was some concern that we should be more concerned with, with bowing to the authority of the church and less concerned with getting uh, information out. Were you able to answer all of the questions that were put to you by the members of the congregations uh, throughout the country you travel? Yes, uh, very much so. Uh, most of the questions, like Chip said, I went with Chip along with Tom. And basically it was an, it was an idea of concern. Uh, down there they have not received any information as to what had taken place here. And so basically they were kind of general questions as to, you know, what is going on? Uh, yes, we that were was able. a major question. Yes, you were asked. what is going on, and um, uh, the other is that that um, they had not heard the other side. We will continue to pursue our calling as students in preparation for ministry in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, under the terminated faculty. We believe they are innocent of any charges of false doctrine, and in fact are faithful to the Holy Scriptures and the Lutheran Confessions. We therefore resolve to resume our theological education in exile, trusting in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ died outside the city so that he might bring into existence that city which is to come. The city is in the process of coming now. We are part of it living stones in God's temple and we share together in that holy city of our God with our brothers and sisters in Christ at Eden Seminary and at St. Louis University Divinity School. Together we share a common faith, together we put our trust in God and we let him lead us where he will we know we can count on him. Amen. Amen. I don't understand the ethics of this kind of operation where two neighboring educational institutions really interfere and encourage the kind of exile, quote unquote, that has taken place. We're pilgrims, brothers and sisters. That's what we are as God's people. We'd like to have a nice, safe refuge somewhere to call our home, but we have no continuing city anywhere here in this world. I certainly am concerned about it, but I'm for teaching all the way. As our church has, we have two pastors, and they each take a stand on it. And there's actually a division here amongst the pastors. We hope that it's uh, harmonious. Everybody will uh, somehow get together in Christian fellowship and not uh, bring personalities into it. The church is stronger than the human beings because God said it would be on the earth forever. And I believe that. So this is just a passing thing. In a short period of time, there have been other disputes throughout history in religious movements. And uh, in the end, uh, uh, as I said before, the Church of God will prevail. N not particularly, although uh, one of the men told me that there'd been some snafu on the communications. He said that more apparently were going to turn out tomorrow. That's all I've heard about it. That's the only word I've heard. We've been getting some <laughs> feelings from uh, particularly the conservative side now uh, from ministers who say they see no way around a split in the church at this time. Do you think that that is necessary and is, is, is uh, inevitable? I certainly don't think it's necessary, and I don't think it's inevitable. 
Uh, I think it's a time for people to keep cool heads and not say things and do things that could increase the uh, possibility of such a tragedy taking place. Do you think there is room in the church for two divergent uh, uh, theological standpoints? Well, of course, nobody has complete doctrinal agreement or theological agreement on all points in any church body. Uh, the way I've always put it is that I think that the divergencies that we have had and that have been expressed are too broad. I haven't uh, said that the only solution to those is to throw people out of the church or for people to quit. In the uh, earlier times, three or four years ago, when conservatives were peeling off and leaving the church, I begged them to stay. And I would say the same thing with people now that uh, think they have to leave, that I hope we can create a climate of enough uh, dispassion and enough uh, uh, willingness to listen to each other so that we can sit down and get at some of these things. Do you think the problems uh, could arise out of the fact that there has been too much secular involvement in the administration of the church? We heard students saying, this is not uh, Dr. Preuss's church, this is God's church. We heard faculty people saying that. Well, I, I am totally in agreement with that. It is God's church. It is not mine and it is not theirs. It's his. But I think that the uh, very statement that it is God's church ought to mean that our church then be faithful to God's word. Because the only way we know God is through his word. We don't get it out of the air. And we don't get uh, the ideas of what God's will is for us out of our own judgment or our own wisdom. We get it out of God's word. Why is the minority still here? You, for example. Well, for, for me, I, it is the, his, Jake Dr. Uh, Preuss, is, I agree with his doctrinal stance. I, his approach to scriptures, I feel, is the historical stance of the Missouri Synod. It, w it was what I was taught in confirmation class, and I see no, uh, that's, uh, no reason for changing. How do you feel about all your friends who have left for this uh, life in exile? Well, uh, my heart goes out with them, and uh, I'm still hoping that we can do something whereby we can get back together. Is it doctrinal with you? Is that the main reason you stay? What do your folks think of this? My parents stand behind me now, now that they understand really what is happening here. I visited with them about a month ago, and uh, they, were, they were worried at first, but now they stand behind me. Uh, what about if you cannot get uh, certification as a Lutheran minister? What will you do then? Well, it's very much a step of faith. I feel God has called me as his child. Uh, he's called me to be a minister, and I have faith that he will call me into a particular parish. Lutheran where, parish? Where, I'm not sure. Lutheran, I hope. I carry a double portfolio, exegetical department, and this office. But that's the only reason for it. Now, we did invite or did appoint one of the men from outside of our group, Mr. Vincent, to take over as chairman of the uh, practical department, but he refused. And you remember the student body applauded when this was announced. I mean, that, that's kind of the atmosphere in which we're living. You, you, we talked about heresy and about how you feel about that word and that it perhaps is out of place in this situation. Uh, uh, the students, uh, one of the things that they'd like to see done is for the board to make their charges public. Um, do you see that happening? Uh, yes, the board has every intention of working through the assignment that it has at New Orleans. Now, one of the problems uh, I discovered, for instance, uh, drinking coffee with a few students this morning is that they, they anticipate that this can be done much more quickly than is actually feasible. This simply takes time because the board wants to work through this very carefully with each person. And I think that needs to be said to the board. The students somehow have a notion that this is an impersonal, hard-boiled group of people who have no concern for the sensitivities of life. And that doesn't happen to be the case. They've taken this problem of the moratorium in stride. They could have issued all kinds of threat, I suppose. Uh, they had every right to. But they're working on the assumption that uh, students here and faculty people are mature, 
that they're members of the body of Christ, as we like to say, and that therefore no kind of threat is even in order. They didn't even want to consider it. What is the reaction of uh, the mission workers throughout the world uh, to uh, what is going on at the church at home? I guess a, we have a quotation from the president of the Wabag Lutheran Church in New Guinea uh, to the effect that they were uh, deeply hurt, their feelings. to us a very high commendation of Jim Mayer. And when Jim was terminated, the Wabag Church said, you really didn't treat us like brothers. Jim is secretary for South Asia, which includes India, Sri Lanka, or Ceylon, and New Guinea. And yet in that same press release, the board commended him for his creativity. Now, we believe that Jim is an extremely creative man who has learned, because he lived in the Indian culture for 15 years, who's learned what it's like in that country and how to relate the gospel. In a situation like this, I need a little help. I need, uh, I've very well demonstrated I don't possess all, all wisdom. I'm not infallible, and I need some, some wisdom of some good, intelligent people who love the mission of the church and know a great deal about it, and um, know a lot about the structure of the church. But we do not have uh, clearly enough guidelines in our organizational structure to, uh, settle questions of conflict between boards and staffs. In a sense, what you are seeing at Concordia Seminary is exactly the same thing. A board of control and its executive officer who were at loggerhead. We see certain personnel changes taking place at the seminary that could very well determine the destiny of some young men who are presently enrolled in the seminary and would have great bearing on the ability to attract additional black youngsters into the Lutheran ministry. Uh, we see a deletion of some courses from the curriculum that we think are most important toward uh, sensitizing the Lutheran church to the needs of the inner city congregations. Uh, uh, we see some things that are happening in terms of uh, the absence of black instructors on the faculty. We see a change in role of uh, black clergymen present presently in the Lutheran ministry, all of which we think uh, can be directly affected by this present controversy. When you married uh, a man who was coming to work uh, as a minister, did you ever think this would happen? No, I knew things would be difficult working for the Lord, but I, no, this I did not expect. Would you have preferred if your husband had been a mechanic or, uh, or a teacher uh, in the public school system or something else like that? No. Um, I, I don't feel desperate. I don't feel alone. I feel that um, we are committed with other Christians, and I don't feel like we are out on our own. It's a very dark day. We've, we've survived them in the past. I'm sure we will again, but it certainly is a dark day. So as, from, from what you said, these students that have, have gone into exile might as well not even have bothered because they won't be able to be placed anywhere. Well, I wouldn't say that. Uh, we're going to make every effort to get them placed. Mm -hmm. But it makes it difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know just exactly what we will do, but we're working on it. Well, what if congregations decide to start to join these students? Do, do you see a real division? Uh, I think here? the real problem is uh, whether congregations will call them. The president of one of our largest districts told me the other day that he doesn't have a single call for a candidate. And another president with, uh, who has 13 vacancies said that not a single congregation was requesting a candidate. 
Uh, do you agree with that, that uh, they're not getting a, uh, much of an even shake uh, through this whole thing? I think they've been forgotten maybe until yesterday. And I think uh, it's getting harder and harder to forget us now. Mm. What about ministerial certific uh, certification? Is that endangered at all? Yes, it is. And uh, fourth year students in particular and some graduate students are very concerned about that. When will you know uh, whether that's in jeopardy? I can't say. Um, regarding that in particular, I haven't had any word at this point. Is there a time limit or something that you're working with? Not that I'm aware of. Do you know how many students there are today? I don't know how many have come to the campus today. I understand, or some of the figures at least I've heard, are that there are to be over 400 students that will be coming here from Concordia. Mm -hmm. Do you know, are they paying for the classrooms? I don't know what the financial arrangements are. There has been some kind of an agreement that is being reached with the authorities, but what the details of that are, I simply don't know. How do these students uh, take your, your talk when you talk to them? Well, they're, uh, they're very receptive and warm. Uh, uh, they seem to be glad to be back at work, and uh, we're delighted to be any help that we can to them. You've just come from class. How did it go? Oh, I'm real fine. We were welcomed by Dean Sullivan. He came into our classroom and said hi to us. And uh, one of the sisters that goes to school here came and talked to us for a while. And I thought it was a very warm welcome on the part of the people that go to school here. You don't feel it's awkward to be going to St. Louis University? No, it's a, well, it's a different feeling uh, being in a classroom again. It's been over a month now, but uh, I don't know, it's a really great experience. The dorms and everything, it's all different uh, being down here. But uh, I think we're going we're gonna to really enjoy it down here, I think. How are you uh, paying for this? Well, right now it appears that we're just finishing out the quarter that we've already paid for under the present administration of Concordia Seminary, but we will be re-enrolling, I assume, under the Seminex program for the next quarter and paying them directly. So far, no complaints, sir. No complaints. <laughs> I think this is an extraordinary situation, educationally speaking, and it's going to take extraordinary measures to try to get through the work that should be done. But I think we have the caliber of student and professor who are both capable of doing that. How are you going to finance this? Going to these schools is pretty expensive. Well, it shows you how impractical a person I am. I haven't really thought too much about the money yet, but I sort of have a strong feeling that it will come. Because usually where your conviction is, you finally put your purse or your pocketbook there, too. President of the Senate, Dr. Price, uh, says that he feels this is interference by St. Louis U and by Eaton Seminary in the affairs of the Missouri Senate. Do you feel this way? Yes. In fact, I, I, I go further than that. Pastoral posts from these young men who will presumably graduate from Eden and uh, from St. Louis U. Well, they have no chance to get into the clergy of the Missouri Synod unless they spend another quarter at some time here to do the necessary work because the rules are very explicit on this that you must spend your one whole last year here on campus in order to earn a diploma and without a diploma from this seminary or the other seminary in Springfield, Illinois, it's not possible to get uh, certified for our clergy. They may be ministers, but not in the Missouri Senate. Is that it? Well, that would be a possibility, uh, that they would be ministers in, an, in some other church. But as you know, there are not many openings in other church bodies uh, either for pastors. Can be certified and placed. Uh -huh. But at this point, the, uh, the so-called seminary in exile is not, is not is being not rec recognized. It's not recognized by our church. Uh -huh. But you don't see a real division then in the, in the church itself over there. Oh, the, the Missouri Synod is very durable and has a tremendous loyalty, and I don't see a division occurring. Not of any major proportions at any rate. Can they go to the parish from this uh, school in exile? We anticipate that the, the churches are so eager to receive these men, these preachers, that there will be arrangements even though there may be some difficulties. How are you, uh, are you paying for the classroom space? 
As I understand it, the arrangements have been made by Dean Dom with the university, and it's all a legal kind of arrangement. Details I don't know. I know that the university is being careful to, to spell out the, the situation and the circumstances. But you don't really know what it's costing? I really don't know, no. I don't know about the money part. There is no great shortage of ministers today. As a matter of fact, uh, the past two years, we've had a little bit of problem taking care of the number of graduates we've had. And at the moment, uh, that problem seems to be uh, more acute. So that, uh, as I see it, the pressure from that side isn't nearly so great as it might have been, let's say, seven, eight years ago. We understand you're not going to be certified as a Lutheran pastor from Seminex. Well, that's the way it stands right now. We hope by this sort of action that reconciliation still can come about within our church. If not, I have a ministry to mankind as a whole, and whether it's Lutheran or some other synod in Lutheran, uh, in, the, in Lutheran church, that uh, my ministry is called from God, and a church body doesn't make any difference. What about you? Uh, what's next for you now? Well, I plan on finishing some graduate work with the seminary in exile, and I think that the, uh, the church will be outraged enough at what is happening that it won't turn us down, and we will be clergymen in the Lutheran church, maybe not as we know it, but I think that uh, we definitely will become clergymen in the church.